Hi, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to Poem Praise 2. And peace and blessings be upon you and your family this morning. Now, we are going to get right back into Black Stars, African-American Women Writers. Currently, right now, we're in Part 4, Modern Times. The next African-American writer I have for you is Margaret Walker Alexander. During the time period of 1915 to 1998. So, without further ado... It reads as such. Jubilee, 1966, the sweeping historical novel written by Margaret Walker Alexander, was based on stories she heard from her grandmother, whose mother was a slave. Unlike Margaret Mitchell's popular novel, Gone with the Wind, in Jubilee, there are no happy slaves. 100 years after the emancipation, black Americans welcomed the book. They were ready for a different view of the Civil War. Margaret Walker was fortunate in having a grandmother who was willing to tell her about slavery. Many older blacks refused to share their memories because the experience of slavery was a source of shame for them. So they stopped discussing it, as though it had never happened. But Margaret Abigail Walker's grandmother was not about to forget. Margaret's father would sometimes suggest that her grandmother was making up tales. Her grandmother would then promptly respond that she wasn't making up anything, but was telling the child the naked truth. Born in Birmingham, Alabama to Sigamood C. Walker, a Methodist minister, and Marion Dozier Walker, a music teacher. Margaret was reared in a home where education was valued. Her talent was encouraged at an early age. She wrote her first poems as a preteen. At first, her father dismissed her efforts. But he later gave her a date book and suggested that she record her poetry in it. Young Margaret set a goal to fill all the pages, which she did by the time she turned 18. By then, she was a junior in college. She wrote every day. In addition to the encouragement she received from her parents, Margaret also received recognition and encouragement from one of her teachers, Miss Fluke, who recognized that young Margaret's skills far exceeded those of her peers. She suggested to the Walkers that they make an attempt to get her exceptional daughter out of a small segregated black school and into an arena where there would be greater challenges. The poet Langston Hughes later visited New Orleans and made the same assessment of Margaret's achievements. At age 15, the brilliant young student was sent to Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. While studying there, Walker met Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, who published her first poem in Crisis Magazine when she was 18. Her favorite teacher, Professor Edward Buell Hugerford, helped expand Walker's knowledge of the techniques and forms of poetry. It was in Hugerford's class that she began the first draft of her masterpiece novel, Jubilee. She did not know it at the time, but Professor Hugerford waged a one-man battle against racism to have her admitted to the Poetry Society of America. Graduating from Northwestern in 1935, during the Depression, Margaret searched in vain for employment. After seven months, she began to work with the WPA Chicago Writers Project, where she held a variety of jobs, including typist and newspaper reporter. While working for the WPA, she met author Richard Wright, 
She was impressed with his talent and ambition, and the two became close friends. She became part of the Chicago Renaissance, a literary movement that grew out of a South Side writers group, which she was which was led by Richard Wright. Excuse me. The author completed the famous poem, For My People, 1937. At age 22, For My People, along with uh, 26 other poems by the author, were collected in a book. It received a Yale series for younger poets awarded in 1942, making Walker the first African-American recipient in the awards history. Continuing her education, she earned a master's degree at the University of Iowa in 1940 and a doctorate in 1965. Margaret Walker married uh, Furness James Alexander in 1943 and had four children. Her husband became disabled and she supported the family, by teaching school in South Carolina and Mississippi. As a professor at Jackson State College in Mississippi, she established a black studies program. Walker retired from the university as a professor, a Murtis of English. She was the recipient of num numerous, excuse me, literary awards and honors including a Rosenwald Fellowship in the City University of New York Langston Hughes Award. She received the Outstanding Lifetime Achievement Award at the International Black Women's Con Conference held at the New York University in November 1997. Walker published works for My People, 1942, Jubilee, 1966, Prophets of a New Day, 1970. How I Wrote Jubilee, 1972. October Journey, 1973. A Poet's Equation. Conversations between Nikki Giovanni and Margaret Walker, 1974. For Fair Street Green, 1988. This is My Century, 1988. The demonic genius of Richard Rice. Not demonic. It may be de demonic. Because the spelling of the word is D-A-E-M-O-N-I-C. Genius of Richard Wright. 1988. So excuse me for the pronunciation on that word. That's why I spelt it for y'all. And on being black, female, and free. 1997. A collection of essays. Margaret Walker Alexander died on November 30th, 1998. At the age, well, she died in 1998, y'all, at the home of her daughter, Marion Coleman in Chicago, Illinois. Alfred Teen Harrison, director of the Institute for the Study of History, Life, and Culture of Black People founder by Walker at Jackson State University in 1968, said of the famed author, author, excuse me, she was our motto, our mentor. She showed the way. That was the mark of greatness. And this is her picture right here that I can show you. Did you see it, y'all? Okay. Now, I do have a section here. It's titled, What Influences a Writer Most? And it reads as such. Now, Margaret Walker attributed much of her created genius to her parents who taught at what is now Dillard University in New Orleans, Louisiana. She recalls uh, whether the music was classical, Bach, Beethoven. Beethoven or Brahms, church hymns or anthems, folk songs such as spirituals, work songs, blues or ragtime, and popular ballads and jazz. I heard music, my mother's music, as my earliest memory. My images have always come from the southern landscape of my childhood and adolescence. The meaning of philosophy came from my father, from his books, 
and from his sermons. Most of all, it came from reading the Bible. Next here is a picture of author Richard Wright wrote important social novels about African American life, such as Black Boy and Native Son. And here is his picture right there. And for the last section we have is entitled On Being Human. Margaret Walker lived in the South during the turbulent 60s. Her neighbor civil rights leader, Megger Evers, was assassinated on a street where she lived. Hmm. Yet reflecting on the injustices she has seen in life, Walker observed, I taught my students that every person is a human being. Every human personality is sacred. Potentially divine. Nobody is any more than that and nobody can be less. And that does complete Margaret Walker Alexander during the time period of 1915 to 1998. So I want you to be well, take care, be blessed, and it be it thy will, I will speak with you soon here on Palm Praise 2. And just to give you an actual uh, preview of the next writer that I'm going to have for you, it's going to be Gwendolyn Brooks. So, be it thy will. Till next time. Later, y'all.